Hello and welcome to another episode of Drams Delivered. Um, this month's episode, we are going to look at a dram from Pulteney Distillery, not Old Pulteney, and we will explain why that is in the episode. Um, and it's a distillery, an area that has an amazing kind of whiskey history and just history in general. Um, normally we touch a little bit about history and go straight into the dram, but um, this is such a kind of impressive story that we thought we'd kind of try and go through it in a little bit more detail. So let's rewind the clock back to 1808 and there was a, a brand new harbour built in Wick and it became very, very popular with up to about a thousand boats operating out of the harbour and it became the capital for herring, uh, herring fishing uh, across the whole of the UK and, and further afield. And it became so, so busy that they, they needed to build housing. And in 1810, two years later, um, Pulteney Town was then built. And it was named after Sir William Pulteney, who was head of the fisheries. And he was kind of viewed as the man who made all this happen and brought great wealth and trade to Wick. So hence they named the town after Sir William Pulteney and called it Pulteney Town. So that was in 1810. And in 1825, an illicit stiller named James Henderson, he came to town and thought, there's a lot of people here, there's a lot of workers here. What do they need, John? Well, workers get thirsty, don't they? They so. get thirsty and they needed whiskey. So uh, after, in 1825, you could legally produce whiskey. The tax man would take his cup, but you could make it. So he legally set up a distillery in Wick and everything was going well, Wick was booming, but unfortunately, sometimes all good things come to an end. Yes, well, I think a lot of those workers were having too good of a time and <laughs> racking up pretty huge debts. So even though the herring industry was booming, uh, all those workers were getting pretty pissed and spending all their money in the pub, which was leaving a lot of families and women and children destitute. So they actually enacted a prohibition upon the town of Wick and the surrounding area. Now, this has really not been talked about much in Scottish history. Um, American prohibition is kind of romanticised as this thing of daring outlaws going out and beating the smugglers beating, and beating the law yeah, and yeah. getting away with it and having a good time as they do it. Um, the actual prohibition in Wick went on from 1922 until 1947, which is 12 years longer than prohibition in the US, <laughs> and yet almost nobody talks about it or knows about it, um, which I think is just incredible. incredible. Yeah. Now, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You can tell a Scotsman it's illegal, but you can't stop him from having a whiskey. <laughs> um, so there were actually a lot of illegal stills in and around the area of Wick. And if any of you are archaeologically minded and are in the area, you can actually still go and see some of the sites um, where these stills were, which I think is just absolutely incredible. Um, not only were there illegal stills, but there were also a lot of illegal drinking dens in Wick. So, yeah, I mean, this is kind of within living memory that this was going yeah. on so I think it's just absolutely incredible yeah, for um, sure, for sure. but yes luckily Prohibition was ended in 1947 and Old Pulteney opened up and fired up its stills not long after that yeah. and it's it's been going ever since yeah it was in it was in pretty poor condition but um, it's most well the current owners Inverhouse um, who own Bal Blair as well they they're the current owners and they spent quite a lot of money refurbishing um, Old Pulteney, uh, or Pulteney. I always keep, we, we, we get it wrong all the time, but technically it's Pulteney Distillery um, and the brand name for their whiskey is Old Pulteney. I think actually it refers to the, the nickname Sir of Sir William, William Pulteney. Pulteney was, was known as Old Pulteney. So, so that's, yeah, yeah. that's where it comes from. Um, so yeah, you can go visit Old Pulteney now, Pulteney. Um, and it's, it's a lovely distillery, it's just on the street and... Uh, what street is it on? Oh, oh you uh, beat me to it, you beat me to it. It is on... Hunter Street! street. <laughs> Which is why this whiskey is named Old Pulteney Hunter. Hunter. So, there we without go. any further ado, I think it's time we cracked it. Have a legal off. dram. A legal dram. A legal dram. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all drams are good, but legal ones are the best, of course. Of course. Of we wouldn't like to break the law. <laughs> Ready? So, yeah, go for it. Ooh, solid. That's a good one. Solid. So tell us a little bit about the whiskey. Yeah, so Old Pulteney, um, 
is often described as like a maritime dram, um, but genuinely is all their expressions are unpeated. Um, and this is also unpeated, so this is not made with barley um, that has been dried by burning peat um, in a kiln. Um, but it is a smoky old pulteney. So this whiskey has been aged in casks that previously held peated whiskey. Um, do you want to tell us where they're from, John? Yes, so that peated whiskey was made at Nokdu Distillery, but it would have been labelled as a Nok single malt. So another distillery that Inverhouse owns within their own family. Um, interestingly, interest, interestingly, well, <laughs> legal not, drugs. Even, not even had a drug yet. <laughs> interestingly, yeah, another distillery that they own um, that is marketed from a different name. So the distillery's Nokdu, the single malt is a Nok. Um, but yes, yeah, they take the peated casks, over to Old Pulteney, they fill it with unpeated new make spirit, so it picks up, yeah, definitely a little bit of that smoke. So yeah. technically you could say this whiskey is not peated, but it does have a little bit of smoke in there. It's definitely got a little smoke bit of, there. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, straight away you're getting that sort of earthy note that you would expect from a peated dram. Yeah. So it is bottled at 46%. Now, is it coloured? Is it chill filtered? It doesn't say. I think it is chill filtered. So we can't really say for certain, but as always. Lovely nose though. That's delicious. It's really inviting. It's, I think for those who are maybe new to peated whiskey, um, this might be a lovely little bridge into it. Mm. Um, some of the stuff from Isla um, is quite intense, whereas this is a nice little little bridge into it. The, the, the smoky, Peated flavour is well is there on the nose for sure, um, but it's not it's not you know off it's not the dominant it's not flavor. dominant yeah you know, the sort of dominant flavours I would say are vanilla toffee salted caramel salted caramel is a really good one for that it's, it's and yeah, I think that classic old pulpy flavour note of of salty sea air is Maritime. Def definitely present so let's have a wee taste Slange. cheers Slange. cheers. Mm. Waves of coastal salinity, <laughs> like milk, milk chocolate. Yeah. Waves of coastal salinity. Very you good. Make fun very of good. Very notes, good. But no, no. If you don't good. agree, then that's fine. No, no. That's whiskey. That's cold. whiskey. If, if we all agreed, that's there it. would only be one <clears throat> bottle of whiskey in the world. So it's going to be a boring watch if me and you always agreed. <laughs> yeah. It certainly would. <laughs> now, not to get too technical, um, I think this episode's done quite a lot of, of history. But one thing that is worth noting about old. Pulteney is the their stills are really really unique um, so they have like a bulb in them so normally like a still looks like a swan's neck it kind of is wide at the bottom and narrows in mm -hmm. up to the top but at Old Pulteney they have like a wide bottom and then they have almost as equally wide, wide like a bulb at the top and then they a have boil like a, bulb. a boil bulb um, and then they have a flat top as well and and the we, line arm kind of just comes off the side like yeah. that, rather than sort of up and like that. Now, we won't get into the technical <laughs> stuff, but we have heard a few stories of why it's like that. Um, so one I've heard is that they cut the tops off to fit them into the distillery. Could be true. I've also heard that the stills are easier to repair. If they've just got a flat top, you can just cut a line arm off and then re-weld mm -hmm. another one on. And the other one we heard was that um, it's kind of pays homage to all this illicit distilling and actually the illicit stills up in that area kind of looked like that um, kind of bulby kind of short cut off top so they kind of wanted to replicate that at Pulteney so don't really know the answer but these stories are always got a bit of charm to them and I think that's what what makes whiskey is the stories and the kind of the mystery, mystery the mystery, the mystery is, of is it. the real joy of it so we'll never really know we'll never know but the dram itself lovely um hopefully you guys are enjoying it again maybe as a little bit off the off the beaten track in terms of what you're used to but I guess that's the idea of the club um I'm a big fan of that I think that's that's very very nice so yeah, yeah. lovely dram well yeah. I hope you guys are enjoying it at home but for now and until next time Slanch of Cheers. Cheers.